Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're going to be discussing some long-term moving averages. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Now, we've spoken at length about a lot of these long-term moving averages, and one of the things you may remember is the idea that we previously discussed about how once Bitcoin falls below the 50 week SMA, we typically go to the 100 before too long and then we go to the 200 week SMA before too long. We saw that in 2014. We also saw it over here in 2018. And then we also saw it here in late 2021 where we fell below the 50 and then the 100 and then the 200. So this is played out like it always has. Has it not, right? The 50, 100, 200. This is why we've said before, uh, that, that 2022 is just acting like a fairly typical bear market for Bitcoin and for the entire crypto asset class as a whole. But one of the things I, I think we should talk about is uh, the fact that we've been spending quite a long period of time below the 200 week SMA. And maybe this is not a popular thing to talk about, but I think it's worthwhile to talk about. Okay, this is not something we've previously seen happen with Bitcoin. I mean, have we gone below the 200 week Sure, we have. We have never spent this amount of time below it. And we talked about there was a strong likelihood that we would in fact be going to the 200 week moving average. If you guys remember, we put out a video back in February of this year calling Bitcoin a date with destiny. Bitcoin was just below 40K, 37, almost 38K, as you can see in the video. And the idea was that we were destined to go down to the 200 week moving average and in fact have our date with destiny. Well, we in fact got our date with destiny. And since then, we have gone below the 200 week moving average and we continue to spend a lot of time there. Now, there's a number of reasons for this, but I wanna talk about two, uh, two ways that we could look at this to help uh, explain the current, the current market dynamics. So first of all, maybe three different things to consider. The first thing to consider is that this cycle was in a, in, sort of had its own character in the sense of having a double peak, okay? now. If Bitcoin had just sort of peaked here and then come back down, the 200 week SMA would still likely be below the current price. I mean, the 200 week SMA back in, say, October of 2021 was around $16,000. So by having a double peak, we gave the 200 week SMA a lot longer to continue moving higher. For instance, at the first peak, the 200 week was only at around 12K. At the second peak, it was actually closer to around 17K. So it had gone up by about $5,000 between the first and second peak. The second thing to consider that we are sort of going up against this time is the idea of a, a recession. The Fed is, is more hawkish than, than I've seen them in a long time. They are continuing to raise interest rates despite the fact that the economy is slowing down. It makes sense because inflation still is high, so they don't really have much of a choice. Uh, therefore, it makes sense that risk assets would not do that well. And therefore, it makes sense that we spend you know longer periods of time at, at fairly suppressed prices. But with that said, you know, from, from a different point of view, you could argue that this is not really that much of a, of a suppressed price compared to, say, prior bear markets. I mean, prior bear markets, we saw, you know, 87% correction, right? Or, or the last one, like an 84% correction. And then, the, and then the first one, of course, we saw like a 94% correction. So I think the, the general idea here is, yes, like the prices are low. Uh, and, and to some degree, you could argue that it, it, from, from where we were last year, the price is suppressed. But in terms of a bear market, in terms of what we would normally experience in a bear market, this is pretty much on course, if not so far, just a bit better than, than what we've previously seen. So for instance, like a, a long-term moving average might, might act as support for a certain period of time, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's always going to act like that. And we've said that many times. And, and here we are hanging out just below the two-week moving average. Another way to view this, and I've spoken about this before on this channel. I think I did it during a live stream or something. But I wanted to talk about it again. And this same concept we talked about back in 2019. I wish I could remember what video I talked about it in. I've tried to figure it out. Uh, but sometime before we went to the three-week SMA in, in 2020, I put out a video in like 2019 saying, well, what if we look at it this other way? And, and we talked about how three and a week SMA was somewhat of a likely possibility even back then, although, although there was no guarantee that it had to happen. The way to look at that and, and sort of try to figure out uh, at least you know, part of the argument is that 
if you look at this from a different perspective, you could see a different trend, okay? So if you just look at the 200-week SMA, it kind of, you could argue, well, it tends to hold support at the 200-week. But you could also argue a different line of thinking. This is just an academic exercise. Again, don't take it to the bank. They're not going to cash it in. But if you look at the first cycle, we don't really have enough data to have a 100-week SMA at the bottom. However, if we were to dubiously speculate, right, uh, this is the shirt, right? I don't know if you can see my shirt. Dubious speculation, as always. That's all we do here. If you were to dubiously speculate, by the way, you can get a t-shirt at the store, uh, store.intothecryptoverse.com. Um, you can kind of argue that Bitcoin more or less bottomed at around the 100-week SMA during the first market cycle bottom, okay? Now, should you extrapolate? Yeah, probably not, right? I think a lot of, a lot of engineers, a lot of uh, scientists would say extrapolate. You know, interpolation is okay. Extrapolation, get that nonsense out of here. But I'm just sort of thinking out loud. You could make the case that had there been some price data over here, then the 100-week SMA might be sort of cutting right through here. And you could argue that during the first cycle, we bottomed it around the 100-week moving average. All right. I don't know if you're going to buy what I'm selling there, uh, but that is that is sort of one argument to, to sort of take. Then, the, then you could argue that, well, what about the 200-week in the next cycle? Because the next cycle, we didn't bottom at the 100-week, right? We sort of bottomed at the 200-week. Yes, we had a couple weeks below, but we spent a lot of our time above the, at the 200-week SMA, and, and that is ultimately where we bottomed. And if we tried to throw through 300-week SMA on there, right, again, we don't even have the 300-week at that point. Again, you could argue that if you were to extend it, it would be at the 300-week, but that's just we simply do not have the data. So you could argue that cycle one bottomed at perhaps the 100 week, cycle two bottomed at perhaps the 200 week, okay? So then we talked about this in I think late 2019. Um, and this was after the bottom was already in, in fact, that we could go back down to the three and a week SMA uh, before we have another bull run. And in fact, we did. But what's interesting about that is when it happened, the 300 week SMA was higher, the price corresponded to a higher price than where Bitcoin was when it hit the 200 week. So had you assumed, had you been the guy that said, you know what, I'm going to buy Bitcoin at the 300 week rather than the 200 week over here, eventually you would have gotten your wish, but you still would have been buying it at a higher price because by the time, you know, by the time Bitcoin hit the 200 week SMA in 2018, the 300 week was at like 2285. But by the time we actually got to the 300 week SMA, it was closer to around 3,800, which was higher than the prior market cycle bottom. So sure, you would have gotten your wish, although it was it ended up being at a higher price. Okay, so first cycle, you could argue the 100 week moving average. It's a dubious, a dubious bit of speculation there, right? The second cycle, maybe you argue it was the 200 week SMA. Third cycle, maybe you argue it was the 300 week SMA with the caveat that the bottom was actually at the 200 week, right? Maybe that's the caveat, but still it went to the 300 week moving average, all things considered. And then if you've extrapolated this trend in your head, you know where it's going, right? We're currently sitting just above the 300 week moving average, uh, are we not? I mean, this is, you know, this is something that we're, we're sort of seeing play out right now. We are sitting at the 300 week, just above the 300 week SMA. In fact, the 300 week SMA, funny enough, is now at a higher price than where the prior bottom was. The local the local bottom that Bitcoin found was at 17,585, but the 300 week SMA is now at 17,667. So the 300 week is now higher than where, than, than where the price was when we found our last bottom. But you're probably wondering what if we were to extrapolate the trend? Well, I'm glad you asked. If you, if you were to add, if you were to overlay, say, the next moving average in line, obviously it would be the 400 week SMA. I'm sure some of you guys are already rolling your eyes and that's fine. But if you throw on the 400 week moving average and we sort of just continue to talk about this trend, right, of, of cycle one bottoming at the 100, cycle two bottoming at the 200, cycle three bottoming at the 300 with the caveat that the 300 was actually higher than the 200 by the time we got to the 300. What if cycle four's bottom is closer to the 400 week moving average as, a, as, as you know, um, as ridiculous as that line of thinking is. And I mean, I, I would argue that it, there certainly is a possibility this is the case. I mean, does, does, a, does the 400 week SMA, does it provide a price that seems somewhat reasonable? Well, the 400 week SMA, let me check, is currently coming in at around $13,360. Does that make sense? Well, if you take a, a, a price move from the peak 
down to that level, that is about an 81% correction, which if you think about it, isn't that far off. And it might even explain the current trend that we're seeing going from around an 87% drop down to an 84% drop down to an 81% drop, right? That seems like it could be somewhat plausible. So then that you know, sort of raises the question here, is there further downside to go with, um, you know, with this bear market? And as you guys know, I mean, in 2022, I've said, I, I think this is gonna just be simply remembered as a bear market. Could we have counter trend rallies and bear market rallies? Sure, but at the end of the day, cash is king. And it's remained king for the entire year. Have you have you missed out on some altcoin rallies if you didn't find yourself yoloing into altcoins? Well, sure, and I've missed out on some altcoin rallies. But guess what? I don't really care, right? To me, this is not not that important right now. We're just sort of in search of a major Bitcoin market cycle bottom, and and we're still trying to figure that out. Now, if we were to go to say the 400 week moving average, there's no guarantee that the, the price is going to be, or, or the, the 400 week SMA will be at the price that it currently is. I mean, again, the, the 400 week SMA is currently coming in at just over $13,000. By the time we get there, the 300 week SMA could could in fact be higher. But I do want, you know, one thing that I think we can do is, as analysts quite often is, you know, it's, it's possible to look at something in a very specific way and say, well, you know, the 200 week always access support. That's not actually true. We've broken it before. We went to the 300 week SMA in, in March of 2020. And we also had brief wicks below the 200 week SMA back in 2015. So it does not always hold support. We are clearly seeing that this time around, Bitcoin is spending more and more time under the 200 week moving average, right? And this is going to likely just be a, a, a continued trend for a long time where you know, these as as the asset is is capitalized more and more, the extension from some of these these major moving averages will probably not be as much, and therefore, when, it, when we come back down to consolidate, we might easily go to to lower long term moving averages rather than always holding support at the ones that have previously held support. Now, you couple this analysis, the idea of going down a, a you know a moving average to the tune of 100 weeks every every bear market, you couple that with the general idea that we're facing a hawkish Fed and, and a recession and, you know, a, a longer term stock market, bear market. I mean, if you go look at the S&P, I mean, this is a bear market, right? It's just in a bear market. And if it continues to push lower, by the way, the 200 week SMA for the S&P is, is right where we bounced off of, coincidentally, right? So um, you can see the S&P is currently bouncing off of that level. We have gone below it before. I mean, you can look at March of 2020. We, we went all the way down to the 400-week SMA or, or just below. But over here in December of 2018, the S&P actually bounced off of the 200-week moving average. But do remember, we were not facing high inflation at the time. Um, but it is at least one, you know, one, one, one important consideration to make. Okay. So, you know, I, I look at this. I look at this market and say, well regardless of whether the bottom is in or not, right? We don't know if the bottom is in. There's always a, a decent chance that it's not. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna blow smoke and say that for sure the bottom is in because there's a good chance that it's not. If it's not in, then there are some pieces of evidence to suggest other trends, right? Rather than just simply bottoming at the 200 week SMA. And then furthermore, um, you know, if you if you just look at, at Bitcoin compared to prior bear markets, it's not really that dissimilar from what we've previously seen, okay? Um, I mean, if you if you were to just go quickly take a look at if we were to quickly go look at say the ROI um, from the from the cycle peak, I mean the green line right is 2018 and and these two over here 2014 and 2018 respectively. I mean it's it's just the same thing so far, right? It's not necessarily any different. And if we were to see a final capitulation down uh, to some of those levels then you could be looking at something like the 400 week moving average. So it's just something to keep in mind. I'm not asking you to take it to the bank. I'm just asking you to consider it uh, in your in your sort of toolbox of, of um, analysis that you're using on the cryptocurrency asset class. Look at some of the longer term moving averages and look at the trends in terms of where we actually bottomed in prior bear market bottoms. Look to see where we are now and the fact that we are spending a lot of time below the 200 week SMA calling into question the sustained importance of the 200 week SMA. I mean, you can't really look at it anymore and say, oh, well, bottom there, because this clearly has not acted as a bottom. And and if history is any indication, uh, it shouldn't necessarily have if you had viewed it from the point of, you know, what has been the loss from the peak. Um, 
for instance, if, if, if Bitcoin had bottomed to the 200-week SMA, that would have only been about a 67% drop from the all-time high, which is not, I mean, that would have been a very, very tame bear market, extremely tame bear market uh, if it had bottomed there. I mean, if you go back and look over here in mid-2021, hell, back then we already had a 54% drop or, or maybe even a 55% drop. So to go down, you know, to go down to... Uh, to only the 200 week SMA would have been just about a 67% drop or so. So yeah, we have gone down more than that. I, I think so far Bitcoin has gone down about 74, you know, so around 74 to 75%, somewhere in that level, somewhere in that range. And, and of course the 400 week does sit just below. And do remember there's always a chance that if the 400 week is the bottom, um, that we could easily like, you know, play around in here for a while and then end up bottoming on that level. The main thing I want you guys to remember though, is no matter what, we still need to keep a good grasp on the macroverse and and remind ourselves that if the stock market continues to push lower, um, you know, crypto can as well, being a risk asset. So again, all all models are wrong. Some are useful. Um, this is something you know we've seen time and time again. Just something to keep in mind. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed. Give the video a thumbs up. We also do have the free Into the Cryptoverse newsletter. Each month, we pick someone at random to get a free subscription to ITC, Into the Cryptoverse, for that month. So make sure you check out the newsletter if you haven't already signed up. All right, guys, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.